Here's the Bronco. Here's where it sits. You'll note in there, if you can tell, is an old rusty drum brake. You come around to the other side. And yesterday, we got the new Willwood disc brakes on. Took a little bit of work, but wasn't too bad. It was a pretty shot of the engine. So today is gonna to be getting the other side of the brakes on. Here is a general look at the components. This is the bracket. Let me get my finger out of the way. So the original drum hub comes off. This is for a drum brake Dana 30 or Dana 44. This goes on and this is the caliper bracket. Caliper bracket faces towards the rear of the car. And note the orientation. Flat side facing up. Uh, it has these other machined grooves that sort of make it seem like it should fit right in here. Had it backwards, nothing was lining up, it caused me a lot of frustration. Simple fix, but uh, I didn't have it in me. My friend Nick told me. Here is the rotor and the hat assembly. Uh, nice stainless hardware that's already pre-drilled for safety wiring. And then the six piston caliper. Okay, step one, basically, because these wheels, uh, the center was too small for these hubs and I've kind of made them work. Um, it's a work in progress, don't worry about that. But the locking hub has to come off. These are pretty cool, wanted to reuse them, but it doesn't look like I'll be able to because the other one was pretty messed up inside. So uh, the inner screw, I learned this. Pretty sure that one is the only one that needs to come out. There's three, two and three. It's electro locking hub is off. This one's pretty nice. It's greased on the inside. On the other side, this, uh, I don't know what you call this piece. Someone will know. But the aluminum was broken in a bunch of spots. So if I could find one of these, I would probably reuse these hubs. I've heard decent things about them. Um, you can see the mechanism in there. The set screws kind of lock it into place. Pretty cool little deal. And then harder to see, but we have, let me get the pick. There's a C-clip in here that's gotta come off and then there is a, uh, another ring, retaining ring out here that needs to come off. So you learn something new every day. This ring that holds that little hub part in wasn't even on the other side. So that's the first time I've ever seen something like this. Anyway, that's cool. You can sort of see where that O-ring would be. So I'm not entirely sure, but if you look at those splines, they're pretty jacked. I think someone put something together wrong. Couple nuts, a uh, spacer, and then the hub should come off. But we're gonna get the tire off and work on the drum. Okay, a couple of things before this starts coming apart. You can see it spins. You can hear him dragging. That's good. It's not totally stuck. Um, if we come back here, got a couple of things. And it's hard for me to tell in the sunlight, but right down here at the end of my finger, there's a rubber cap. We can adjust the brake tension down there, so that's what I intend to do. Uh, hard to tell, but you just come in here with a screwdriver. There's a little wheel with cogs in there that I'm not going to be able to show you. And you spin that. One way it gets tighter, one way it gets looser. I don't know, figure it out. Well, that put up less of a fight than the other side. Uh, there you can see the inside of drum brakes. The shoes are actually pretty good. Everything is just old and rusty. And if you come down to the bottom, you can see that little gear. Fairly simple once it's all off. Uh, mostly junk springs, don't need those. From experience, these are the parts I'd keep. Those are hard to find. If anybody needs any, I got extras. In a brake rebuild kit, you'll get shoes and springs and the adjusters and all that stuff. 
So here's this socket. I got it on Amazon. It's gonna fit on that nut in there. This goes on there, that comes out. And there you go. As far as I know, this one, not directional. But the other one is. So I've got two picks. We're gonna go in there. And we're gonna pry this out. There it is. So after that, there's one more of those nuts in there. Use the same socket, lefty loosey. And that one shouldn't be too tight. The first one's a little snug. The second one, I believe, sets the bearing preload. So that comes out. Then the hub should come off. Uh, but we'll see how that goes. So this one is directional. Uh, should be able to see a little nub right there. That's important. All right, there's our hub. Okay, all the bolts are out of the backing plate. Backing plate should come off. And that's what we start with for the Willwood kit. Okay, a little bit of a break in the shade. So there's our hub off. We've got the front bearing just kind of loose on the inside. So careful with that. I'll just set it on the table back here. Um, otherwise, you know, a bunch of grease. It's old, it's a 55 year old part. This one's not nearly as beat up as the other one. On the other side, someone had hammered this flange like crazy. I'm still gonna clean this up with a flap disc. Um, we got our seal and our bearing back here. Seems like it's, you know, there. I am gonna come back, replace all the seals, replace all the bearings, replace the U-joints, but this thing's been sitting for so long that for right now, I just wanna get it operational. That is the prime directive. And in order for it to be operational, it's gotta stop. In order for it to stop, it's gotta have brakes. In order for it to have brakes, I needed to have brake lines. In order to finish the brake lines, I need to have the discs on there so I can know how to route the front brake lines. Hard stainless lines and the uh, steel braided lines. So I'm gonna hammer these studs out. I'm gonna clean up these surfaces a little bit because they interface with the hat on the Willwood kit. And we'll come back and start piecing things together. All right, so we're sort of cleaned up. Quick hit with the flap disc. Maybe I'll do a little bit more sandpaper, but you can see some of these high spots definitely got knocked down, which is good. I went ahead Hit the back side as well, just to clean it up. Not pretty, but uh, it's good enough for the girls that I date. I bought this cool thing on Amazon. This is full of acetone right now, but um, basically never diminishing brake cleaner. So put compressed air in there and you can spray this around. And when you need to, you just uh, put more compressed air in it. All right, here we go. I don't know what the instructions say because we are operating on a different plane of existence, but the bracket's gonna go on. Thusly. Uh, you're probably not supposed to have the caliper bracket on yet, but it's on for fun. Uh, according to the instructions, it says put two spacers and then the big black spacer and then the caliper bracket. That's how it's set up right now. We're going to adjust that later, probably. Uh, these don't really get adjusted, but we're just going to loosely tighten them in there right now, get it into place. Once everything's locked in and confirmed, then they're going to get red Loctite and tighten down to whatever the book says. I think these are 35 foot pounds. All right, so our bracket's kind of snugged up on there. Not too tight, but everything's in place. 
I cleaned the grease off of this spindle just to have a look for fun. Kind of glad I did. Uh, this thing is pretty messed up. It's definitely seen better days. Gears don't feel great. So we'll see uh, what becomes of that. But again, all it's got to do is stop. Uh, while the wheel's off, you can kind of have a look at the plumbing that's going on here. We've got a line lock coming to the front brakes. If you look way back in here, these two lines are going to be incoming from the master cylinders. One goes to the rear brakes. Uh, we come to the line lock, we come to the pressure switch, come down to the differential, and then we'll split off right there. So here is our hat on the hub and the Willwood provided wheel studs. It says to press these in. I do have a press. Uh, it's a long story. I'm not going to use the press. We'll probably use a combination of hammer and using a lug nut with a spacer to pull these into their respective locations. So those studs went in easier than the other side. Makes me wonder if I'm doing everything right, but I think I am. Uh, you can check the gaps here. All looks pretty good. Good enough for me. So we're gonna get the rotor on here. It lines up with those holes. Those, uh, the manual says something about inch pounds. I converted to foot pounds because I'm a dumb American. Um, but it comes up to 13 uh, foot-pounds. So red Loctite, uh, star pattern on the tightening sequence. That is a 5 12-point socket. And then the rotor will be attached to our hub and assembly. And then we can get to centering everything up and getting it on the car for good. And because I am poor and don't have a paint or grease pen, uh, I just color the bolt heads with a Sharpie because I like knowing that I tightened them. Okay, so our hub assembly is on. I tightened the bracket bolts behind this rotor, torched them down to 40 foot-pounds, put red Loctite on them, and I have one of the nuts in the hub holding the bearing in so our rotor is in place. Something I noticed yesterday, which is important, rotors are directional. Also, and I got this backwards. Calipers are directional. You can see that arrow there. So I've got to swap the caliper sides. Probably has something to do with the fact that one of these pistons is bigger. Okay, so we're looking at the caliper on the bracket and the rotor right there. So what we're going to do is measure this gap here, that gap there, and make sure that they are the same. You're supposed to put the nuts on here. Um, I'm not going to do that, be real honest with you. I'm going to hold it and take my vernier caliper and measure into millimeters because I'm as American as they come, but inches are stupid. Based on my scientific calculations, the bracket for the rotor needs to move 0.75 millimeters that way. So the kit comes with two sets of, two sizes of shims, rather. These are the thicker ones. Uh, look in the book, it'll tell you what they are. And then there's a paper thin one. But I took one of these out from each of the bolts and they were about three quarters of a millimeter. So now we'll get the rotor back on, get things tightened up and see if the caliper lines up. Now, hopefully when I swap calipers because I've got them backwards right now, Everything still stays the same. I have no idea what accounts for the big differences, but you know, 1968, engineering, et cetera, et cetera, blah, blah, blah. Uh, also, you can see 40 foot pounds. I tighten those because they have a black mark on them. Gotta be true. What I'm doing is I'm measuring from the caliper surface, not the piston, to the rotor. And when I press that in, this is about 17 millimeters. And when I hold the caliper, press it in where it'd be mounted, this is 17 millimeters. So this one's pretty much spot on. 
So centered in the rotor. The other thing that we'll do is space it forwards and backwards based on the depth of the pads. So spacers on the inside to get the outside of the pad just out here. But what I'll do now is I'll take the rotor off one more time. And since this looks good, I will Loctite the caliper bracket bolts and tighten those down to whatever the manual says. Pretty sure it's 35 foot-pounds. All right, double check, 35 foot-pounds. You can see it marked there, got them tight. Uh, real easy, unscrew one, put Loctite on it, torque it down. Unscrew another one, Loctite, torque it down. Red Loctite is the uh, right flavor, but technically there is no red Loctite. You want uh, 271 slash 27,100, however they call it these days. Uh, I had to go in and put a super thin spacer on the caliper bracket. There's two thicknesses. Be sure that you know which one you're doing. Uh, don't mix and match. Obviously, if you had two thick ones on the top of the caliper bracket and two thin ones, that's a bad combo. Okay, we're getting there. Hubs mostly together, rotors on, spins nice. Spins the way it should, you got the arrow on there. Caliper, wrong. Gonna flip sides of the caliper, but have a look at our pads, looks beautiful. If you look at where the pads, the end of the pad is hitting, it's perfect right with that bevel on the end of the rotor. And that's exactly where we want them, so we don't need to space the caliper backwards anymore. It's sitting where it needs to sit. Calipers are swapped, and that's it. Arrow here matches the arrow there. Uh, all of the measurements and spacers and everything worked, so didn't have to worry about that. These two 7 16 nuts that hold the caliper on get torqued to 30 foot-pounds. Pound-feet, whatever. I don't care about your life. And now it's uh, time to put the tire on. All told, this side took a couple hours, two, three hours. Um, had to let paint dry, etc., etc. Had to swap calipers. It took a little bit extra. Hopefully, it helps somebody. I don't know. Might make life a little bit easier. It's a good looking kit. I think all the other Willwood kits are similar, at least for the early Broncos. So, best of luck.